Plus, a follow-up to the harrowing story on last week's health report, which many of you reacted to strongly and compassionately. It was about a paediatric registrar in Britain, Hadiza Bawagarba, who was convicted of the manslaughter of a six-year-old child through errors which in major part were due to failures in the hospital system. One element in the story was that Hadiza recorded the tragedy as a learning experience in her electronic training journal, and it was this record that was allegedly used against her. Todd Fraser is an intensive care specialist who studied errors, particularly those made by junior doctors, and has developed an Australian electronic portfolio to try to make sure that high-risk procedures become safer. Todd Fraser is in our Wellborn studio. Welcome to The Health Report, Todd. Thanks very much, Norman. So just tell me you know, why this idea came about and what you learned through your experience through training and as a consultant. I think it's fair to say, Norman, that healthcare is a is a dangerous place in many ways for patients, and uh, one of the reasons that we have trouble in is because it's challenging to teach people how to do procedures effectively in this environment. You think about the way that healthcare is structured. We have continuous rosters. We have twenty four hour rosters. We have a continuing. Uh, migratory workforce moving from hospital to hospital. So they, they do without. three months here, three months there, and exactly they're always right. moving around. And they're unable to take that sort of pol- portfolio of their learning with them. And that becomes a big challenge, particularly when you're using various supervisors with various uh, trainees trying to teach them how to do these procedures. So what, what, what procedures are you talking about here? Well, it can be anything, really. Um, Many things can be proceduralised in the sense that they can be measured, whether we're doing them correctly. We can teach them and we can assess them and we can then quantify whether people are able to achieve those standards. But let's be specific. What are you talking about? I mean, things like colonoscopy, for example. If you're a a trainee gastroenterologist, there's a training system for that. You record it and you get accredited for it. Same for surgery. You you know, you have to have a diary of your, a logbook of your sur- surgical procedures to be qualified in that. You're talking about more things that junior doctors would do, like what central lines that go straight into the heart or chest drains to, to, to fix up a collapsed lung, that sort of stuff? That's exactly right. And unfortunately, some of those procedures that you mentioned are fairly infrequently done. And that's where the real challenge is, where there's a, a large volume of experience that uh, an individual junior doctor will get, that's not difficult to to ensure that they get to the right standard. But for many procedures that are core skills of people like myself who work in intensive care or regional practitioners or even junior doctors, they might not come across these procedures very often. So the challenge is how do we teach them how to do those procedures but keep patients safe at the same time? Now, in my day, there was this uh, phrase which was see one, do one, teach one. Um, which is enough to strike fear in anybody's hearts. But in fact, that's what happened. Somebody showed you how to do it. You did the next one. And then the next one, you felt, well, I'm really good at this. I'll teach somebody else to do it. That's exactly right. And we like to laugh about that as a a relic from the past, but it's certainly not. I mean, much of healthcare is still taught in exactly the same way. And unfortunately, it's patients who suffer the consequences. So how dangerous are some of these procedures that are not part of a regular training program, you know, Mm -hmm. to become a surgeon or to become a gastroenterologist, that they're just part of what you learn as a junior doctor and and general work on the wards and in intensive... It's actually very easy to to think of this as a problem limited to invasive procedures, but even things like a a drip that you get put in when you go to hospital for the first time, if not done correctly, can expose you to the risk of infection, which can have serious consequences. And I think one of the things that prompted you is that you saw somebody die from a a badly placed central line. I did, and that experience stuck with me for a long time, not only because... And I should just explain, central lines have really become part of of care in Australia, in intensive care, but also if you're having chemotherapy, it's how you avoid, avoid going into a peripheral vein in the arm. You go in through the neck or through the clav- under the clavicle into a major, ar- a major vein or into the heart itself. That's exactly right. And it, it is a, a, a common procedure that we do, but if it's not done correctly, can have consequences. And in this particular case, there were um, for the patient, obviously. But in addition to that, a bit related to the, the context that you were talking about earlier, we do make things difficult for our junior doctors and the impact of patient error sorry, uh, of healthcare error is profound when it comes to the, the staff. So how does themselves. your technology help get over the see one, do one, teach one? 
So what we're trying to do is to bring some sort of structure to a very uh, chaotic at times environment by providing them with online learning and then an ability to uh, undertake assessment in the workplace using a cloud-based framework. They can get assessments from any supervisor that goes into their own personal portfolio and then they can generate transportable and verifiable certifications. So I'm a fellow or a senior registrar and I'm teaching a second year resident how to do a chess train. Yes, how does it work then? I mean, not normally I'd sort of just teach them and maybe watch them do one and then think they're okay at it. What, what, but they're probably not okay after one anyway. So they've probably got to do a few That's to be right. good at it. That's right. And so, it, and we don't know the, the number that they need to do to be good at it, do we? No, no, we don't. And the model is changing towards a trust-based uh, format where you, the supervisor will be effectively... Um, noting how comfortable they feel with that junior doctor being able to perform that procedure without direct supervision. So providing that level of structure and then something a bit more tangible in terms of a certification means that those junior doctors can move in through their career with a a verifiable set of qualifications. So the consultant, senior registrar or what have you would tick that person off, they've got to that point and some people might get to it with two procedures and some might take eight or nine. That's exactly right. So it's very flexible to those of us who who are a bit more challenged when it comes to procedures, but those who can make progress can move on to other things. And this stays as as an electronic record, as you say, it's cloud-based that anybody can look at. I mean, but without any formal way of doing this, it's, it's still sort of a bit of the Wild West, isn't it? It can be, unfortunately, because there is no other options in many cases. So the culture of healthcare has always been about get on and manage. Uh, There's an expression in the UK, feel free to cope at any time overnight. And that really still pervades uh, our industry. So we need to provide junior doctors with a structure that enables them to succeed. How accepted has your technology become? Uh, among the, both supervisors and junior staff, it's been really well taken up. We're very encouraged by the, the success we've had thus far. Good. Well, um, and we'll have a link to your technology on our website, although we're not endorsing it or marketing it. But thank you very much for coming and joining us. Norman, thanks very much for the opportunity. Todd Fraser is an intensive care and retrieval specialist based in Noosa and founder of Osler Technology. I'm Norman Swan, and this is The Health Report here on RN, ABC News and CBC Radio across Canada.